Welcome to Graham Central Station here in San Antonio, Texas for the sneak preview of Anarchy Championship Wrestling. But we got a little invite about a week ago to do a show along with a music festival. As you can hear in the background, it doesn't stop. What we're going to do is we're going to have all kinds of styles of matches tonight. See what the crowd really digs, what they don't. We're going to try to put together a really good show tonight. We decided, you know, we're going to present the product we're going to bring out to the fans in a different way. We're going to show them what wrestling can be. You know, in my opinion, so many other people just shit all over it. So far we've made a big impact, but uh, there's a lot of, you know, talking like promoters do, which is, which is kind of stupid. We're all just trying, we're not running on the same days. We're not going, hey, you can't do this. You can't run here, this and that, this and that. We just want to run shows, and we want to do a good job of it. I'm kind of in the middle right now, transitioning with all that. Because I'm like, still doing the diva stuff, but I started wrestling at the last show. So I'm kind of in the middle of transitioning because I don't know if I'm going to be ballet much longer. But I still do the sex, you know, the TNA part of it. That's where it started for me, was I just got, you know, hey, we need you, we need a ref. You want to do it? No. Okay, your ref sucks. I'm going to be your ref whether you like it or not. Show up with my ref gear. End of the story. This business is my life. It's all I've ever wanted to do since I was six years old. And every day I get to live my dream. And I don't have to work at a convenience store like former tag team partners of mine. I'm getting a little old. I'm still going to get in the ring, but now I'm taking on more of a role of a promoter and a mentor to some of the younger guys. We're going to get some of these younger guys ready to go, teach them the right way to wrestle, make them go to the gym, make them look professional, make them act professional. That way, when I need to go to just a backstage role, because my body's too old, they're ready to step in and take my place. Yeah. Play them. You're done. Now, boom, and then do the other one. Done some training as a wrestler. Couldn't pull it off, you know. Probably Darren and Lat or Ladder could probably get a good match out of me, you know, because you know, give them a stick or a wet noodle and they can make it a good match. But as far as me, I'm a ref. You know, you can do whatever you want to me though, but just a ref. Anyone in the wrestling business dating anyone out of the wrestling business will not work. It'll never work. It doesn't even have a chance to work. As with me and Darren, we have always somehow magically been connected through this wonderful world of wrestling. I actually met him at a wrestling show and then uh, the friendship continued and then years went by and we continued. We started dating and then eventually got married but wrestling has made our life, our relationship, probably a lot easier than other relationships would be. I mean, we're always on the road together. We're always doing business together. I mean, we're constantly involved in each other's lives. Definitely having wrestling involved in our relationship is a good thing. I don't have to uh, spend two hours convincing her to put in wrestling tapes. Yeah. Tapes? Yeah, I know I dated myself, but yeah, I still have... <laughs> tapes? I still have about... 3,000 VHS tapes. He does. It's ridiculous. But it's awesome because if no, I want to watch... No, it's not. <laughs> They're like piled to the ceiling. But what is awesome <laughs> is if I want to watch some horrible wrestling from 1987... Oh, I'm all there. She doesn't... She doesn't ride my case. Oh, she man. doesn't hate me. She doesn't go to bed angry. She, uh, she watches the same crappy wrestling I watch. <laughs> Working with Darren and Rachel is... Uh, at times, very, very pleasurable. At times, very much a pain in the butt. In the wrestling business, there's not a lot of people that you can really trust and depend on. It's There's a saying, you can either make friends or make money. And uh, I was lucky enough to do both. Me and Darren work very well as a tag team together, and we work good as owners together, but we butt heads at times. Darren is very, very creative, and I... And and Darren is very much up with modern times. I'm very, very old school and very much with how it used to be. And I met a guy that at one time I despised named Jacob Ladder, who turned into being uh, my road partner, my, my tag team partner, one of my best friends, and, uh, and a big part of my life.
ACW, Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Kind of a brainchild of me and Darren Childs and Rachel. We hated working for people, so Ladder and I decided that uh, we should be our own bosses and start our own company. We wanted to do something to kind of take things back to wrestling the way we thought it should be. Not all the Hollywood hype, not all the pyro, lots of blood and guts and hot chicks. Getting ACW together and going about uh, with the, the first show at Graham Central Station, it, uh, it, was, it was crazy. Um, I wasn't too, too well into the wrestling yet. I could be realistic and say, hey, I want 200 people at the first show. That could be a goal. I could want 500 people in March. I could want this. I could want that. Quite frankly, yeah, I, I would love to be the next Big Man, man, and who knows. Odds are pretty good that's not going to happen. Hey, stop fucking, you faggot. Take your fucking Prozac, bitch. God damn, man. That really is fucking crazy. I know, it's all I know. I swear to God, I swear to God, you, you wonder, you wonder, you wonder why I hear voices in my head. Well, guess what? Can you see this? Guess what? The voices in my head, <laughs> they, I can't repeat what they say. Strapped in barbed wire, thumbtacks, staple gun, light tubes, electrified light tubes, anything goes mad. Every, you know, myself, Darren Charles, Nigma, we all busted our ass. We had 900 or so people screaming ACW. Are we sure we want to do this? Do you people have a strong enough stomach to see us do this? And everybody who's at our show, everybody who worked for us. Fans and workers alike were uh, all guilty by association. If you were part of ACW in any faction or any manner, any any way whatsoever, you were basically a hated person at that time due to jealousy and you know politics and blah blah blah. So tonight we all might be friends. But we're gonna fucking kill each other. I believe that politics are always gonna be part of it. And politics are always gonna be horrible, and they're gonna tear me down and they're gonna make me pull my hair out but you just have to rise above it it's like the wrestlers in the ring they get beaten down they get beaten down and it's just about how many times you get up the politics are the same way they're gonna keep beating me and beating me and beating me and beating ladder and beating ladder and you just have to rise above it <laughs> I think Darren and Ladder had a little bit more fun beating me up with tubes and barbed wire than uh, I did getting hit with barbed wire and tubes. Oh! 
So I'm reading all over the internet that Darren Childs is now a hardcore wrestler. I'm a deathmatch guy, which isn't entirely true. I'm professionally trained by a WWE Hall of Famer, no less. I know how to wrestle, but I do believe that deathmatch wrestling does serve a purpose. <laughs> I think you have to have the hardcore because fans want to see it. They want to see the violence. They love to see blood. So I think that what me and Ladder are doing, per se, as far as hardcore wrestling goes, is introducing a new style to a territory where it's very popular up north. You know, sometimes people sit there and they'll be like, how can you get hit in the head with a steel chair for 200 people or whatever? And I'm like, you know? That's what we do. These guys are workers, for, first and foremost. They're wrestlers. But if they have to, you know, take some barbed wire and kill somebody, then that's what you're going to do. Because it all serves a purpose on a show. You have to have a little bit of everything. You have to cater to everyone. People have been wondering, with all the injuries and wrestling, is it fake, is it this? Wrestling's not fake, I don't care what anybody says. Right now, I've been dealing with post-concussion syndrome for six, seven months now. Ain't gonna get any better. Troy Aikman retired from football because of it. I won't retire from wrestling. Every show, I get a concussion. Nothing I can do about it. I'll puke, wipe my mouth, and keep doing my job. You know, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> It was scary, it hurt a lot. I'm not used to wounds on my skin. Uh, I'm not used to barbed wire. I'm still not used to barbed wire. I don't, if anybody gets used to that, then they're a freak. It was sick, it was sick stuff. And you could tell, I heard fans going, like, oh my god, is that real? Oh my god, that's blood. That's blood! Oh my gosh, just light tube, you know, because the light tubes obviously crack them and they pff, they go everywhere. And fans were even like getting covered. They're like, oh my gosh, and they were freaking out about it. And I want the fans to know that this company was built on them. This isn't something I'm doing for my ego. This certainly isn't something I'm doing to increase my paycheck. It's not just about us as wrestlers or me as a promoter. It's more or less about the fans and get those fans to cheer the first time we presented our product. You know, that's what we do this for is for the fans. Hell, they buy the tickets, not me. You know, so hopefully they'll keep me gainfully employed for a few more years. But I want every fan to leave my show going, fuck, oh, dude, I only paid ten, seven, five bucks for that. We'll see. We'll see how violent one of my matches gets. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, it was fun for, for what it was for me. The fact that at one point me and Ladder took off Skylar Skelly's shoes and threw him feet first into like broken glass and thumbtacks and all this stuff. Which, barefoot thumbtacks are bad, but it's the broken glass will just slice you to pieces. With all the light tube fragments. <laughs> Skylar
brother had his shoes pulled off. Because, you know, there are the skeptics in the crowd, like, oh, this is unreal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like, you, that's your foot. And those are thumbtacks. Oh, I feel fantastic. It's covered in cuts and bruises my feet. Oh, was more were the worst, because, uh, thumbtacks are fine. I've, I've stepped on a couple of thumbtacks. Barefoot thumbtacks match. Um, but the glass is really what hurt the most. I got glass on my feet, and that didn't come out for about a week after until I see these little red dots on my feet that just kind of swell up. And, uh, I see people do thumbtack, barefoot thumbtack matches, but, uh, I haven't seen anybody do a barefoot glass thumbtack match yet. Hopefully, me saying that doesn't make me have to do one now, because that would suck. Uh, welcome to ACW in uh, so many ways for everybody. I had talked to Ladder the night before, or like the, the week before, and I said, asked him, you know, hey, can I do the show? And he's like, yeah, and he explained everything to me. And I said, well, if you need me to go through light tubes or whatever, I'll do it. Shouldn't have said it. I should have learned that time. That was the first time I should have kept my mouth shut. Not something I would do. They told me what they were going to do, set it up, whatever. <clears throat> At first, I thought it was just going to be regular old light tubes. Didn't know how they were going to do it. They just showed me, you know, the finisher and whatnot. So I was like, all right, cool, whatever, I'll do it. And then we get to the show, and it's electrified light tubes. All right. A little bit more metal in there, but bendable, whatever. So when we did it, I didn't think about it. I just knew it was going to happen, of course. And walked it through, and it, it happened like in slow motion for me. Now the thing of it was, is it hurt when I went through because I was picking shards of glass on my back and on my ass. But if you watch the match, they had a bunch of thumbtacks everywhere. Get to the back, I go to sit down on the concrete so I can start taking my tape off and my boots, and I've got thumbtacks in my ass. I fucked off in Koch's lockup and like a cow. I just was like. Standing okay. there going, okay, make sure. I thought he was, I thought everybody was hurt too, so. I don't know, I thought it was good. It was decent, man. I want to do another one. They did the, uh, the electrified light tubes, and it was kind of like, hey, we're, we're here in town. We're going to be a force. Uh, we're going to have to make some changes. Well, kind of like, hey, we're, we're here in town. We're going to be a force. And we're going to do stuff that you guys have never seen before. You're used to me tearing up bathrooms and turn up your mic. and I'm, I'm very calm, you know, I'm. I can hold it all in to a point, but you know, you know how it is. Any little thing sets me off. You know, it takes promoters believing you, and it takes the fans coming. Even if the fans don't like you, they still spend their money to come talk trash. You know, I'm all for it. You know, I'm never. A lot of guys, they don't want to tell the fans stuff or. They like their heat, you know. You know me. The minute I walk through that door, the minute I wake up in the morning, it's the showtime. Probably the only time I'm not showtime is when I'm sleeping, but my girlfriend says that I fight in my sleep, I twitch, and I'm just, so I guess I'm always Mr. Showtime. It's it's a it's a shoot, it's not a it's not a character, so Showtime! You sick, crazy fuck! You might have walked out of here tonight, but tonight, we're still standing tall! Because these people got a taste of who's taking over this fucking town!
I don't care how much blood we gotta shed, how much money we gotta spend. I promise you, you come out January 14th to the venue, 800 Lexington, 7 p.m. Bell time. You're gonna see Anarchy Championship Wrestling kick ass. Hell with all those other companies with their stupid fucking initials. Cause ain't none of it matter but A C fucking W. It was the epitome of anarchy. It's what we were going for, you know. Three of the owners in there together, just like, busting it out, trying to uh, show the fans that something different was coming. It was really nice, uh, kind of a thrown together kind of deal, trying to get everybody into, into what we're about, kind of an introduction of what we were, what we are, what we're gonna be. This was real wrestling. It was real death match. It was real passion. And that's what ACW was about then, and it's what it's still about. And hopefully, that's what it'll always be about. It, I guess it kind of pigeonholed Anarchy Championship Wrestling at first as being, you know, hardcore, and that's all we do here, and it's hardcore wrestling, and there's nothing really else going on. But I think it eventually we showed ourselves and, ex and you know, showed that we've got more than just hardcore, more than just TNA, more than, you know, we have all sorts of matches. But ultimately, the three of us, we just want to see ACW do good. And I'm definitely glad that that day has come and gone. And I don't have to do the first show again. But, you know, it, it's a special day and it's always going to have a special place in my heart. You know, we made a, a big statement that night, you know, when everybody cheered. And the best thing about it, finally I'm standing in the ring as a performer. But when the fans are chanting back for that promotion, it wasn't the chant for just me or just Darren Childs or Enigma, they were chanting for our company. Thank you. It's the worst part of wrestling with thumbtacks. I'm going to take them out of your fucking boots a couple weeks later. Next time on Squared Circle Dreams. A security deposit, you know, you normally get back unless you put guys like Showtime Summers, who tends to break a lot of shit. Boom! Fire all over the building if you want. Don't break anything. And what's he do? He works his way out to the outside, brawl, brawl, brawl. Hey, you, give me a suplex on this table. Life of a promoter. Professional wrestling isn't cheap when you start out. You have to spend a lot of money. It's all part of the show. It's just a show. That's all you got to remember.